Hi, my name is Andreas, and some say the perfect aircraft does not exist yet. So I decided to build it on my own. If you love aircraft, follow me, get it from dream to reality. Let's go. Hi friends. I thought that this time I may show you a few hidden secrets, something that you would normally not see. Well, this episode is about our progress with our lift augmentation system, aka the flaps. Originally I intended to use P47 style flap system because of the buried links and also the high maximum drag. But because of the requirements that we got for short field capability, I decided to switch to something which is a little bit more resembling what is used in a Boeing 767, like you can see in this video here. It has a huge increase in wing area combined with a slot for re-energizing the airflow, but still offers a high flap angle providing drag when needed. I redeveloped the whole kinematics clean sheet from scratch in order to fit the geometry of our wing. The foreflap with a cord of only 2 inches sits flush with the wing's upper surface at any angle, while the main flap is subjected to the full airflow below the wing. You can see here how the wing has perfect airflow over the whole upper surface at pattern and approach speed. The task of the foreflap is to take the flow below the wing and forcing it over the main flap to prevent it from stalling. This way the main flap can still efficiently work at an angle of approximately 50 degrees. Sorry that there are only pictures today, but this is what I got from the aerodynamicist. Here you can see the wing at near stall speed and there still is quite a good airflow above the wing and also the main flap still does its work, as you can see from the flow lines parallel to it. In the picture for the lower side, you can see why it is a bad idea to mount the pitot tube at the leading edge of the wing and why it is instead put on the lower surface at 25% cord with a bit of offset to the surface. It also shows the best location for a stall switch, but we are using an angle of attack sensor instead, which will help us keep speed and attitude during approach at the optimal level. Have you ever wondered why you can feel some buffeting on the controls just shy of stall speed? For non-pilots out there, buffeting means that you can feel a light shaking or a slow vibration on the control stick. The buffeting is caused by little vortices from the wing, which form when the air starts to separate when approaching stall speed. These vortices are not stable, therefore the vibrations. This picture shows the vortex, which is only occurring at a certain point of the flaps. If you would just look at the static picture, there would be not much to see. But in reality, airflow is dynamic and changing over time. So if we take another picture at exactly the right moment, we can suddenly see the vortex just before it is hitting the elevator. And this is the reason why you can feel the shaking on the controls. The last thing I wanted to show you for today is the engine inlet. You may have wondered why we haven't attached it to the fuselage form yet. The reason is that while we have already established that it provides adequate air supply, we noticed during evaluation that there are certain speed and power combinations where air separation can occur, creating unwanted drag. So we are now performing little changes to the form of the inlet to avoid that because we want everything to be perfect. So that's it for today. As always, leave me a comment, hit the like button and don't forget to tune in the next time. Fly safe, fly Horus.